channel. By now, everybody in the 5 liter performance world should know the following thing. The best way to upgrade your factory iron E7 TE heads is to head over to the wrecking yard, find an explorer, grab the GT40 or GT40P heads, and voila! Instant 25 or 30 horsepower. But here's the next question. What if I want to upgrade even further to a set of aftermarket heads? If only Richard had the dyno day to show us how much power a set of aftermarket heads is really worth over a stock head or the Explorer head, then we can decide, is the juice worth the squeeze? When it comes to 5 liter Ford performance, one of the questions everybody has is how much are cylinder heads worth? And then their second question is, okay, but can I go to the recce yard and just get like Explorer heads and then how much are those worth? Is that a better route than stepping up to some aftermarket heads? In this case, we're going to take a look at some Airflow Research 165 heads. There are a lot of other good head outs, heads out there. In fact, I have a couple of videos up where we tested a, a bunch of different cylinder heads, including this 165 head. And there's a lot of good choices out there. But what I wanted to do is compare the difference between going to the wrecking yard and getting a set of Explorer heads and then taking a look at something like a 165 head or the TrickFlow 170 11R head. You know, like I said, there's a lot of good stuff out there. But this will show you how much extra power a good head is worth compared to a stock head and then also compared to what I would put something kind of in the middle in terms of the GT40P head. Good option going to the wrecking yard but there are better options for more power. So let's take a look. This was our combination. It was actually a rebuilt 302. It was 30 over. We had a forged piston in it with valve reliefs because that allowed us to run camshafts later on. The camshaft that we ran in this combination, so again, that was a flat top piston. We ran a camshaft, an Extreme Energy 264 cam. I'll go ahead and put the specs up there. Fairly mild. A lot of times I run the 274 cam, but we put a smaller one in this because when we did the comparison of the cylinder heads, I actually used the larger 274 cam in our 331 stroker for a, a different set of heads. So we ran this combination with a dual plane performer RPM air gap intake manifold, a 650 Demon carburetor, and a set of long tube Fox chassis headers. They were inch and 5 eighths hooker super comp headers, so kind of a long tube that you would actually be putting on a 302 for this application. We had an MSD distributor, and we first ran it with a set of E7TE stock 5 liter heads that would have come on this, this hydraulic roller motor, because that's what this originally was. It was originally a 5 liter Ford hydraulic roller motor. So these are the heads that would have come on here. In fact, they were the heads that were on this particular combination. The only change that we made to allow us to run a camshaft with these cylinder heads is we did a valve spring upgrade. And we also, I think, had to change maybe the push rod length to facilitate all that. We ran um, a set of rockers on this combination as well. And we ran all of this and did a direct comparison by taking off the stock E7TE heads, putting on a set of GT40P heads, and then also putting on an airflow research head. So run with our stock E7TE heads, our carbureted combination, again, 650 Demon carburetor, produced 306 horsepower. Since this was a 306 <laughs> cubic inch motor, we made exactly one horsepower per cubic inch. Peak power occurred at about 5,300. Peak torque at 4,000 RPM was 342 foot-pounds of torque. Here's what happened when we installed a set of iron GT40P heads. We did indeed pick up power, and this is one of the reasons this one jumped up to 336 horsepower. Peak torque was up to 359 foot-pounds, and this is actually one of the reasons that I would like to go ahead and revisit this test. You can see the big fall-off there around 5,900 RPM. That's definitely valve spring, and we'll also see that on the airflow research heads. And I wish that when I ran this big test, we did upgrade the springs on a lot of these cylinder heads, and we upgraded the springs on these GT40 heads from the stock ones, but obviously we didn't put enough valve spring in there because we still ran into problem at 5,900 RPM. So I'd like to see something that has a smoother curve than this with those GT40P heads. We also ran a set, before we get to the airflow research heads, we'll take a look at those next, but I also ran a set of GT40 aluminum heads from Ford Racing, and those picked up a fair bit of power, 353 horsepower, torque was up a little bit with the aluminum heads, 363 foot-pounds, so the aluminum GT40A, the GT40A, I had that for aluminum, but those heads were definitely worth power over the GT40P heads. But now let's take a look and see how much power is worth if we step up to an Airflow Research 165 head. 
Now that we've taken a look at what might happen if we went to the wrecking yard and gath gathered up a set of either GT40 or GT40P heads, they're going to make similar power between those two, and upgraded our stock E7TE, our factory 5 liter heads with our junkyard combination, we saw that we could pick up 30, 35 horsepower or so. But what happens if we step up from there? Is a set of aftermarket heads really worth it? I mean, to step up, they're going to cost obviously a lot more than a set of heads that you get from the junkyard, although the junkyard stuff is becoming more and more expensive like everything else. But is it really worth it to step up to a really good set of heads? And what do you actually get? Well, this test was a perfect example. So this was our stock one with the E7TE heads. And then we ran our GT40P heads. And you can see we went from 306 to 336. So essentially 30 horsepower. But here's what happened when we put on a set of airflow research heads. These were Airflow Research 165 heads. They also had slightly smaller than stock chambers. They were at 58 cc's. They obviously flowed a ton more. And as we've come to expect from a lot of the Airflow Research stuff, they did very well in this test. Um, bolting them on, you know, improved both peak power and peak torque. Peak power was up near 400 horsepower, 396. And peak torque was at 378 foot pounds. You could see even compared to the GT40P heads, they essentially added power from about 3,000 RPM all the way out to 5,800. And if you look at the downturn after 5,800, this was another example of why I would like to revisit this test. There's actually two, and we're going to talk about the second one just a second. The first reason is if we see that kind of downturn like that, that's not a normal power curve. What happened there is it's probably valve spring control, just like we saw with the GT40P heads, and we saw with others in this test as well. I'd like to revisit this just so that we could get the proper kinds of curves. I don't foresee the peak numbers changing at all, but what we will see is on the after peak, the shape of that part of the curve will definitely change. It will just roll over a lot smoother, and it would be nice to have that. The other reason that I want to do this is there's a, a long time ago, Carcraft did a test with 165 heads, and this information has been going around for years, because every time I post a test about this, this always gets brought up. Well, the, these guys made uh, 400 horsepower, over 400 horsepower, with a stock camshaft and a set of Airflow Research 165 heads. And as good as these heads are, um, you can't do that with a stock camshaft. <laughs> and what I have to do now is put my money where my mouth is, and I'm going to recreate that test. And I'm going to go back and revisit it and demonstrate what actually happens. Because I doubt that there's very many people who have done more 5 liter forward actual dyno testing. <laughs> there's very few people that have done more of that than I have. And I know what these things do having run dozens and dozens and dozens of these combinations with different cylinder heads and camshafts and stuff like this and i can almost guarantee you that that's not going to happen but the only way to demonstrate that is for me to actually step up and recreate what was there and see what actually happened so you guys can look forward to that but this was a combination with a 165 head it had a flat top piston in it so it had good compression it had the 165 with the 58 cc chambers but it also had a much much better than stock camshaft because we know that this camshaft is probably worth 25 or 30 horsepower over a stock one because i've run that test many many times it has a very good dual plane intake manifold on now maybe with a single plane we could get a little bit more peak power out of it as long as we could cure the valve spring problem but it will be an interesting test i'll either find out that yes they actually did that and you can do that in which case you guys win because you get to do a 400 horsepower combination with a stock camshaft which would be awesome i kind of doubt that or we get to show that that's not accurate and you guys get the accurate information let's get to our conclusion Okay, guys, there you have it. What do we learn from this little venture? Upgrading the cylinder heads on our mildly modified Ford 302 5 liter. You know, it had a cam. We had forged pistons in it, but primarily the forged pistons were just there to have valve relief. So later on, we could put more camshaft on it. We had a dual plane intake manifold. We could have also run this test with any number of the available, like long runner factory style EFI manifolds, but we ran it with a carburetor, 650 Demon, long tube headers. But in a direct comparison on the cylinder heads, and that's really the important part, obviously the stock heads definitely are holding this back. Now, if you have a mild combination, if you just have the stock heads and the stock cam and stock exhaust manifold, don't expect a lot from a cylinder head upgrade. 
Our combination was in a position to take advantage of the extra airflow offered by the cylinder heads and the extra power production, and it did so, as we saw stepping up from the stock E7 TE heads to the GT40P heads, the GT40 head will also work, and we even showed what happens when we run the aluminum GT40 heads. We saw that we definitely picked up power. It was worth about 30 horsepower or so, and I've run that test a number of times, and that's kind of where it comes out. If you got a decent camshaft in it, and you can take advantage of the airflow offered by the GT40 or GT40P heads, you'll definitely get more power compared to the stock head. That begs the question, is it worth it stepping up to a set of serious performance heads, Trick Flow 17011Rs, the Airflow Research 165, Edelbrock Dart, lots of good heads out there, Canfield, all of that stuff, and they all work very well. You can take a look at the video I have up where I ran a bunch of those different heads, and you guys can judge for yourself, but ultimately, you are going to have to decide that. Is it worth that much power, and I can show you how much power it was, is that amount of power worth the extra cost because there's definitely going to be extra costs going from a junkyard GT40 or GT40P head to something like a set of Airflow Research 165 heads. Is that worth the extra money? And really, that's something only you guys can decide. Our picture holder, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More testing coming up.